Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. My guest at the moment, the third guest of our 72nd episode of Modern Art Blitz, is critic, curator, and probably a lot of other things we're going to get into, <laughs> the legendary John Seed. John, thank you. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Great to be here, Matt. Hey, so um, here we are, and I don't even know where to begin, so let's begin at the beginning. Okay. Y did you start off as an artist? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to college. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, I, I was going to Stanford, where nope. not many people are, are art majors, right? Oh, no. And I took a monotype class with Nate Oliveira, and that was wow. it. I saw what I Nathan wanted to be. Nathan Oliveira, but it's Nate to Mr. Nate Oliveira. Nate here. Oliveira, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, so having a mentor made all the difference. Wow, and then wow, wow. Uh, graduate school at Berkeley. So I really got a feeling for Bay Area art, which oh. is still part of my curation. Wait, what yeah. year are we? Because you're not part of this radical uh, free Stanford speech. Stanford 79. Oh, okay, and then okay. Berkeley, so this is after all the commies Berkeley were Berkeley 81, 82. But you're the, like the, co the first capitalist there, Yeah, right? but, but, but at Berkeley, the vibe was still there. Really? You know, I was still the kid in the polo shirt, and everybody else was, uh, you know, oh, way wow. rad and I, angry, and I wasn't angry. Did you ever get beat up? No. For but, the, but, a, but a flute player attacked uh, one of the artists at an opening at Berkeley, you know, after one of the shows. Wow. Yeah, you never think somebody with a flute a is going to be you know, well, assaulted. I never trusted flute yeah. players, yeah, ever, but, ever. You ever see Puffin Stuff? It's yeah, about yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, see Puffin <laughs> Stuff is all about the magic flute. Ever okay. since then, no way, pal. So, so, so tell me, John, uh, why are we talking without showing your art here? Because, because you're not an artist yeah. in... Well, I mean, I, I, my master's is in painting. I'm a painter, and I showed it to New Space Gallery a long time ago. Had a one New Space? Show. New Space with Joni Gordon. Joni Gordon, Gordon, with Gordon, Gordon discovered yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, back then, I knew Peter Zakowski back then was showing wow. there. Wow. And I had, had a one-man show. But what happened is I moved inland and took a teaching job at Mount San Jacinto. I just finished my 31st year teaching there. Okay. Yeah, so moving inland, you know, okay. Right. That's Hello? me. That's yeah. me. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. There we are. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, how long have you been inland now? Uh, Thirty-one years. But I want to go. I want to go to before I moved inland because there was something uh -oh. I wanted to talk about. Tell me. Well, you know, in uh, eighty-two, eighty-three. Tell me. Tell me about your first job in the art world. Uh, my first job in the art world after grad school was working for Larry Gagosian when he was kind of a new young dealer on, like, on North like Almont Robinson. Larry Gagosian, as in Gagosian Gallery. As in Gagosian Gallery. But nineteen eighty-one, eighty-two. Nobody knew him. He was. Right? Well, he'd been selling posters in Westwood. Okay. And then he had a gallery on uh, North Almont where he had Basquiat's first show in, in 82. And then I drove up with my truck one day and said, do you need somebody to do deliveries? And I got hired for a thousand a month. I was the uh, delivery guy. Okay. And then what happened was, and this, this connects to, you know, we're all hearing about uh, Basquiat painting. It sells for $110 million. It just sold for 100, a, a Basquiat? A very large Basquiat. Large Basquiat for $110 million. Now, it originally sold in 1984 from a Nina No Say gallery. For 4,000, yeah. No, no, for 19,000. No, no, a Nina sold it for four. And then Spiegel's bought it for uh, 19 in 1984. In 84 they yeah. bought it? I bought a Basquiat for 5,000 uh -oh. in 1983 when I worked for, for Larry. How much did you sell it for? Uh, 5,500, but Jean made me sell it back. Oh. He started, after I bought it, he called me at home and said, I want a major collector to have that. And oh. he said, I will do your portrait if you sell it back to Larry for 5,500. Okay. And he did, he did a little portrait on a broken uh, Aaron Brothers stretcher bar called John Seed White Sambo Gringo. Wow. And I found it when I was, uh, cl you know, cleaning up his studio when he left, and I sent it back to New York. He'd moved in it at Broomstead, you know, in, in, a, in a loft at uh, Warhol. Does it say your name on that? On the yeah, box? yeah, I'm sure it hit oh, the dumpster dear. as soon as it made it to New York. Yikes, yikes, yikes. But anyway, I had a Basquiat fly out of my truck on La Cienega Boulevard. Oh! I was delivering one to uh, Paramount, and you know the Basquiat's, they used to have the stretcher bars with the corner, you know, like this? Yeah. And I had it leaning down on my Toyota truck, and a gust of wind hit it, and I saw it in the rearview mirror, and it went out onto the yellow line and it did like a, a roll, like a kite would do when it came out of the sky. And I watched from the rearview mirror and I hit the brakes and I pulled over and backed up and nobody ran over it and no damage. So I just put it back in the truck and you delivered know, it. You know, a car driving over it or two might have improved it. But, uh, <laughs> Anyways, so, you can't so, do that anymore with a So did you, did, did you know Jean-Michel uh, quite well? Oh yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I stretched his canvases. The, the uh, triptych that's up in the Broad is a canvas I made for him. Wow. Because I made all the canvases for his show in uh, 83. So, so now would you be able to authenticate them? 
Well, I don't do that because there's nothing but lawsuits in Bosque authentication. Uh, Stephen Torton, who's another guy that worked for Jean, does do that. And there's also a dealer now who's starting to do that. My but understanding is he's the most forged artist uh, out there. I get forgeries in my email all the time. Really? It's heavily forged, yeah, because people oh. want me to you know, give an opinion. I just say, no, you know, <laughs> no yeah, opinions, yeah, yeah. no. What, now, the, thing, the thing about a Basquiat, is there something that if you would, were to advise somebody, let's say you go to somebody's house and they, you sit down to dinner and they're trying to impress you with their big Basquiat and you can look at it and you know right away it's a fake. What about it? would tell you it's a fake. Well, you know, just likely it is if they have it in their house. Because <laughs> oh! I mean, you know, there's so many fakes out there, right? Wow. How many people really have a Basquiat? But I have a one to 10 scale when people email me. You know, oh, really? one is just ridiculous and 10 would definitely be, but, but I don't do that anymore. You know, I just worry it would only bring grief. It just brings grief, opinion, lawsuits, right? headaches. I know yeah. like, like the Warhol Foundation no longer authenticates Warhols because right. they're like, what's, what's in it for us? It's just lawsuits. Yeah, yeah. It just all it does is piss people off and then they fight us and then, yeah, okay. Yeah, but we do all the work, cost us money. When I, when I hear $110 million for Basquiat, I see that in my rear view mirror, I see the one rolling down the yellow line behind me. $110 million, you could have said it's gone. And yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Of course, there's that guy like Picasso's handyman that had all the extras and all of a sudden, right, right. oh, he just gave us to fix the plumbing and we've never shown it. Well, people were now. stealing from Jean like crazy. There was a dealer from New York who stole a Basquiat when I was working there. And uh, Larry had like a little back room and there were some drawings. And, and uh, lady dealer went back there, just took the drawing out of the frame, must have put it in her purse and, and you know, stole it. And uh, he had drawings and things all over the floor of the studio and people were stealing there. Wow. But you know, it was just, it was everything you'd expect. Wow, quite, yeah. a, quite a feeding frenzy. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I calculated that $19,000 purchase price yeah. in 1984 of the Basquiat that sold for 110 million. Yeah. And it was actually a 40, about the equivalent in, for inflation in 2017 of $45,000. So, you know, Basquiat was already getting, you know, $45,000 resale paintings. Right, right. I mean, I mean, did the money, is that why do you think uh, he, he did himself in? Was there something about his character? I, I, well, I, I think that if he had, uh, if someone had helped him with his drug addiction, you know, underneath, there was other stuff going on, right? You know, years of therapy. Yeah. But, and I, I don't think that anybody, I don't know if anybody really tried hard because there was too much money. Being There's too made. much money and, and, you, and you might actually affect the flow of the money if you were to get this person to sober up. Right, even you know, when he was selling paintings for $5,000, that was a lot of money. He was oh, already yeah. a star. I mean, one time I took him to the bank and uh, I got $5,000 for him for, for the weekend. He'd spend that in a weekend. Wow. And I had a fight with him because I told him he should get a stockbroker. And he was very, very offended because that was like a white middle-class piece of advice to give somebody, you know, his, oh, his point of view wow. was, I'll always be a star. Why would I need investments? And he was right. Yeah. He was right. He didn't need investments. He didn't need investments because he wasn't going to be around long enough for them to come to fruition. Right. Right. Yeah. And he was always, his art was always going to be the thing that was, uh, he had equity in his art and his He knew that. He believed his, in himself. He, he wanted really, to be famous and he did everything it took to become famous. Wow. 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 Very yeah. bold, bold guy. Uh, alternating, you know, very, very nice and very, very, very awful. You oh know, yeah, a little of both. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was he ever awful to somebody who could do something for him? That's, oh, I doubt that. I you know, yeah, that. yeah. So he was. He had the user kind of like, oh, can this guy can do something for? But he was oh. surrounded by users, so that tuned him up too. Everybody, it was like a circle of users that was all users all. Okay, around, mutual you know? use society. Yeah. Gotta love the art world, yeah. folks. <laughs> okay. But let's talk. Let's talk writing. Let's talk Huffington Post art writing. And well, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me. Okay, you, you, have, you, you moved to the Inland Empire. Okay. And, but a couple years ago, in the year 2010. The Huffington Post decided to have an arts section. Right, right. And for some reason, you were the man they called. Well, no, I mean, what happened was I'd written a review for the Press Enterprise and they edited it. They, you know, they changed the title, they changed the everything. The Riverside. The Riverside Press, Press Enterprise. Enterprise. I wanted to be an art critic. And I told them, keep your $50, you know, because I didn't like the, the edit, I didn't like the title change. Okay. And someone said, well, contact Peter Frank because there's going to be a Huff Post art section okay. and Peter can get you in. And he did. Wow. And of course the editor was Kimberly Brooks, who you know, who was fantastic. Oh yeah. And it was a hot couple of years blogging for the, uh, the Huffington Post. Yes, she, she, uh, she did a great job there. Now, now the Huffington Post now, anybody, you could just kind of hop on there and blog. Do you still blog at the Huffington Post? Well, I do, but they've changed things. What's happened is that the, the paid uh, editors, the art editors, yeah. have most of the front page. And they only will uh, promote your work if they, you know, they like it. They look at a big stream of things. If they like it, they promote it. But I find myself now on page two and page three. If, so. if, are you, what I found was it was like keywords. Like if, if you put like 10 graffiti artists to sleep with to get to the top, <laughs> boom, it's yeah. going to go. It's, yeah. And, and no? And titles too. I mean, even, even in the early days, the HuffPost, I remember Kimberly told us, uh, that one in a hundred people is going to read your entire blog. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I oh, mean, yeah. you get the, you get the likes, you get the illusion people are reading. If you're your lucky, work. if yeah. you're lucky. Right. 
So, so um, how has writing for the, okay, here's what happened. 2010, you started writing for the Huffington Post Arts. I was right behind you. I started writing right, for the Huffington right. Post Arts. I, immediately, I thought it was great. And then people were like, you're not getting paid. You should not do that. Yeah. What the hell was up with that? Why can't I do what I want? Yeah. Why? Okay, I found there to be equity in writing for the Huffington Post. To say I write for the Huffington Post meant something at one time. Yeah. Did you, you found this to be the, tr the, the, the case also? Well, it, 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 it was a life changer. Completely changed my life. What did, because, what did it change about your life? Well, I'm, I'm curating now, uh, writing for other publications, and, and there also there's a nice stream of income from writing. And, and people ask, what do I charge to write? Well, it ranges from free to a professional fee I won't say on the air. You, you can, know. no, hey, you pimp, know, you know, pimp the, you know. hey, I'll tell you right now. I'll, listen, <laughs> listen, 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 stop right there, stop right yeah, there. Yeah. This is Modern Art Blitz. <laughs> pimp the shit out of what you got. Okay, okay. All right, all right, I so. charge, if you want me to write about your art, yeah. I charge you a dollar a word. That's what I get too. You I get a buck a word? Oh, word. Yeah. 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 Exclusive club, yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. that's great. So if anybody in town tells you as an artist that you should pay them more than one dollar per word, Matt Gleason and John C., the, the evil and the good in the art world charge a dollar a word. So don't, don't dare pay more than a dollar a word. I brought so you a gift. You brought me a gift? I brought you a gift, yeah. What and you know, if, if you're hurting for money, you can sell it. But a dollar a word, you're probably okay. 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 On the back, it says the Trumpian the tr wedding The Trumpolini hack. wedding hack. You'll see when you open the it. The Trumpolini yeah. wedding this hack. This is what I've been doing lately what because if people don't read blogs, you got to have images. You know. Okay, so people don't read blog. People, people don't read, people don't read the blog. One, my mother reads the blog. Yeah, yeah. There it's, it is. Oh, here we are. Yeah. And it's okay. Okay. So we've got Trump as the as the pregnant wife. This is the wedding at right. Canaan, and, right? And Putin is the, uh, the Putin wealthy. is the spouse. And who's here on the? Obama's in the microwave spying on them. In the microwave. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they've got we've got the golf club. Changed all the details. But I, you know, I, I do what I call image hacking. Now, now let me days. ask you this. This looks like an oil painting, but I think, is it a digital print on it's canvas? It's a digital print. You just get them on Zazzle. Zazzle, I'll put in a plug, Zazzle.com. Okay, so you go to Zazzle. Yeah. And you, you, you make something on Photoshop? You upload the image. You can do a t-shirt. You can do a canvas. You can do business cards. How much is a t-shirt on Zazzle? Oh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks, man. 25 for color. And do yeah. they frame it? Man, that's a nice no, frame. I, no, Aaron Brothers. You know, yeah, 40% off with coupon. Wait, this is so, a yeah. gift? You're giving this to me? Yeah, sell it. Wow. Yeah, you can for it. You know, I give them to charity auctions. They do really, really well. This guy is a supreme networker in case you're not paying attention. You'll yeah. notice, I just want to point out for the record, my other two guests today didn't bring me any cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, or nor did they bring me any political propaganda. So, um, well, speaking of Trump, I mean, uh, how do you think this is going to affect the arts? I think everybody's distracted. You know, that's what I've noticed is everybody's talking about politics and everything, you know, everything else falls away. I, I've noticed that too. There's a conversation about art and then, you know, Trump's the daily news of the day. It's the daily show. Right. And, and meanwhile, um, you know, are people going out to galleries? Oh, no, oh, I want to see what happened with Trump. And they stay home and they read the blog and then they're like this, eh, 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 with the mouse or with the phone and then they're never anywhere. And there's a lot of anxiety. I mean, we're all speeded up. I was talking to Jody, you know, before the show and saying, you know, now when I read, I read like I read on Twitter. You know, I read, I read like this and I try to take, you know, a magazine or a book or, or you know, an art magazine and I just, I skip around. I think I'm, I'm fritzed, you know, we're Trump anxiety. We're all kind of on the fritz these days. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if we'll look back on these as the interesting times or the end times. Uh, I'm hoping for the. Uh, I'm hoping for the. <laughs> if it's the end times, we won't be looking back. Yeah, John, I mean, you, you, you know, you went through. You basically, I'm, I'm setting this up as. You're okay. The, you're the wise okay. old man. You're the wise old man. Should I walk <laughs> off now? Ah. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So I'll handle so, it. Geezer. Uh, geezer moment. Okay. You're the all wise right. old man. I mean, what, what? What's your prediction on all this? Like, you know, kind of. Um, politics as this consuming toxic poo that we're drowning in how do we get out of here back to back to a world of art you know uh i kind of hope that what happens with politics it's just like a flaming comet or something and it just you know it bursts and it blows up and then we're back to where we were before not with blowing up with nuclear missiles <laughs> no not with the i'd like to clarify missiles, the but, you know, nuclear missile desire was his you know, not mine whole, whole world of democrats you know back to social progress back to everything kumbaya. being okay you know yeah kumbaya okay yeah. so um well it's been a fun talk <laughs> 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 um but back to charging a dollar a word what would you say to an artist who got a quote higher than a dollar a word 
Who got, who got higher? Who got, who got a quote? Like if somebody else says, no, you, you should hire me, but I'm more than a dollar Oh, there's worth. people that are worth that. Oh, yeah? tell, them, tell them to go for it. You know, you got to have somebody tell your story. And having a good writer, even, you know, 300 words, something that can really, really get a, a, a bead on your work and put it out there for people, I think it's very, very valuable. And uh, I had, a, uh, what you, you, I had a, uh, an artist tell me that he sold $100,000 worth of paintings on one blog that I did. Wow. No names on that one. But, wow, you know, wow, sometimes wow. you just you get things out there and it's very powerful. I had an artist, I wrote something about them and they made millions, but it's only because they had to leave the art world and they went into investment banking. Uh, never mind. Okay. So, um, John Seed, thank you for being on Modern Art Blitz. Where can we read you? www.johnseed.com. It's all there. J-O-H-N-S-E-E-D. Yeah, like you plant in the ground, my dad used to say. Like a what? Uh, <laughs> seed, S-E-E-D. Not Sneed. Right? Seed. Seed, like you plant in the ground. Like you plant in the ground, yeah, like his dad said. Right, okay. Johnseed.com, you're going to read about a, a variety of artists. It's all there. You're not, it's all there. You're not just one stop. I have done, I've done 350 blogs since the HuffPost opened. That's one per and day. And 20 for Hyperallergic and, and writing for Art Limited, and uh, so it's all there. How do you find the foot traffic, f foot traffic, duh. How do you find the eyeball traffic on Hyperallergic versus Huffington Post? Uh, well, right now it's better at hyperallergic. Really? Yeah, but, but I mean, they're doing a lot of politics too, so I kind of feel like the art there falls back oh, in the mix. No. But they yeah, have they, they have a real political. They have they have a Ooh. they have a different mix. You know, it's East Coast. It's a, a different. I like point their I like their political writing. Yeah. I actually, I, I like hyperallergic political writing more than I like political blog political writing. I think hyperallergic yeah. is the is the best overall vehicle for art world stuff right yeah. now. I agree. I agree. We're living in the hyper-allergic era. And uh, Brooklyn Rail, uh, the staff walked off, and uh, Art Limited Magazine is closing. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know. Yeah, no, but just put out their last issue. So On my own show, yeah. I'm getting gossip. Got a scoop. Ooh. No, it's, it's official. That's a scoop. Art Limited yeah. is closing. Why is Art Limited closing, John Seed? Difficult to maintain a magazine. It's expensive. I could, I could have died. In 2008, yeah. I said, Prince fucking dead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so is there still going to be like a, a, the newsletter? I don't know. You don't know? I the don't know. The e-newsletter? don't know the details, but wow. the magazine is, uh, is gone. What's next for John Seed? Uh, retirement in a year. You're not going to retire from art writing? No, no. What's going to happen is I'll retire from teaching. Okay. And then uh, writing, curating, writing, curating. Where, where are you going to be curating? Uh, well, I've got two shows coming up. I have one at the uh, Arcadia Contemporary in uh, Culver City. It'll open on December 7th, and it's the uh, Poets and Artists group show. And then I've got another one called Disrupted Realism with Alex Konevsky and some other unannounced artists. That's at the Stanek Gallery in Philadelphia in uh, January. Philly? It's on my website. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Wow. Well, man, I already said thanks. Thanks for the, the uh, Thanks, uh, goodbye. Nice and then there's like, yeah. plug away. Yeah, OK, yeah. OK, well, we do this show every Sunday, Modern Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this. Okay, Jody, Linda, come on up. 